my mixer sits at idle this spring. I outsourced my patty mixing for many reasons. Every year seems to be a little bit different. Just a matter of managing circumstances. Just too busy with other types of business. So I outsourced all my patties for this season. And it feels real odd. When is the last time I bought patties? I've been mixing my patties for the last five years anyways. I think the best patty mix that I put together so far was that corn gluten meal. The problem with that was, well, it was the reason why I didn't feed last year is because of all the feed dynamics. My feed mill that usually supplies corn gluten meal, they were having trouble accessing corn. Well, it was just a shift in feed strategy of farmers because corn at $10 a bushel, uh, the hog barn switched to a different feed source so the feed mill wasn't milling corn gluten and blah 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 so i wasn't able to access it so that's why i didn't use it last year but the main reason i'm not using it is because it takes so much time to prepare it the corn gluten meal itself comes in particle sizes around that 200 300 microns and i had to mill it down to under 50 microns because i noticed the bees would not ingest any of the feed if it is over 50 microns so i actually sent the product through my mill my pulverizer twice to get it down to that 20 30 uh the, the range was between like one micron all the way up to 100 microns but the average was around at 20 or 30 once i put it through twice and it took a terrible amount of time to do that and when I tried feeding the product, I fed it just corn gluten meal. And the problem was the patties would not stick because there's no binding agent within corn gluten, you know, just particles, right? So what I did is I added soy flour as a binding agent and it made an absolute tremendous patty. Of course, everything was balanced off and mixed off with that supplement that I've been working with that crazy beekeeper from New Brunswick with. But I would say that corn gluten that I fed, especially that following fall, I noticed the colonies that I'd just cranked that corn gluten meal to were the ones that caused that hot spot within my shed because the colonies were so damn big. And then they actually, some of those ended up starving on me. So it was absolutely dynamite just no way I could achieve that this year because of the work and the sourcing but maybe next year we'll see like I have a, a mill lined up here and if I can access some corn gluten meal again maybe maybe I'll get back to that just depends on how things in the farm all these situations and happenings in the farm just always you know you get flanked from one side to the next and it's a matter of just putting out fires a lot of the time so you gotta i've anyway i've learned that you have to be able to anticipate some of the trouble and source it out when you need to so that's what i did i bought global mixed my apis biologics in there and they are ready to go i wonder if i should i poked into my winter shed i did a deep dive into a couple colonies just to see how much brood's going on. And I was thinking while I was putting them back together, I should put a patty on these colonies just to see what's up. I did that a while ago and it didn't end up very well because the bees, they started ingesting the protein and I was feeding sugar at the same time. I was trying and I warmed up the shed a bit and it got the colonies too active and they turned real shitty on me. I mean, they've been inside for five months here with full guts and here I'm throwing a whole bunch of bulk protein at them and some of that or I say more so there could be a majority of that that's indigestible 
as you compare the, the supplement that we're trying to feed them to that which they gather out and about. So I think there's more impurities that they have to deal with with the supplement that we provide them. And if they can fly, they just get rid of it. They access what they can, they utilize what they can, and they just void out the rest. But when they're stuck in a shed with full guts, you know, just like a human who needs to take a shit, it's very dangerous to feed them beans. I'm going to feed two colonies anyways, just to see what happens. Working through my mountain of farm business, I come upon a package. ATM Consulting Limited, Darlings Island, New Brunswick. I got a package from my friend Andrew. So he sent me a message quite a while ago talking to me about, well, he fills me full of conversation on limitless ideas. And this one he was talking to me about is an antiviral. To be fed through the syrup. This is separate from his other products. He's got he's on to this other wavelength. And like I tell you, this guy is the brains and he uses me for the bees. He wants to run a proof of concept trial. Establish two groups of three colonies, treatment control in the same yard. Blah, 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 blah. Normal management practice on both groups. The control receiving straight sucrose syrup and no patty that includes bioactivator. And then he wants the treatment group to receive the patty with bioactivator and then administer this product fed through such and such liters of syrup. Blah, blah, blah. And he wants a beginning and ending Nozema quantification and five viral ID quantifications. Invoice me for the lab work. I don't know if I'll invoice you for the lab work, but I will definitely partake in your little uh, proof of concept trial here. We will see. Everything else, this is the reason why I collaborate with this guy. Uh, he seems to be making a little bit of a business around it, which is quite exciting. I like to promote brilliance, innovation, you know, free thought, just that untapped energy. I like to promote all those aspects, and that's the reason why I collaborate with him because he deep dives me into conversation, which I can receive from absolutely nowhere else. 
And this guy just seems to be on that balance of absolutely pure brilliance. Well, you've, you've listened to him talk on my channel here. But sometimes I think he tips over to that batshit crazy. He just, you know, whereabouts is he during this conversation? Which makes him so damn interesting to listen to. But I've been using his product. And I, and I mix up the names of the product. All it's Bioactivator is the supplement I use for my patties. And I brown bag it, well, except for this year because I ran out of time doing stuff, so I'm actually buying the product from them. And BioControl, that's the stuff I call rocket fuel. <sighs> Bit of a spark. I'm going to be using those products this spring. Uh, it's in my patties. I mixed it with Global already, so that's ready to go. I just got to get these bees outside, and I just have to put the patties on the colonies. And then... Uh, Biocontrol, the rocket fuel. I'm going to be mixing that in the first round of syrup for sure. Uh, and if they need a little bit more, uh, probably I'll mix it in the second round of syrup too, just to get that brood nest going, right? And then whether or not I'll carry on with that, I don't know, because it's expensive. I don't want to use this stuff when I don't have to. I just use this product during the absolute critical times within the bees' development. And that's right out of the shed. And the other time is preparing for winter and then I'll have it just sitting on the side on the shelf waiting to go for time throughout the spring when mother nature throws me that curveball right just to help keep the momentum of those callings going any any rate that's why I use that product and he taps me into a conversation a discussion of nutrition which I really appreciate because I think beekeepers need to pay more attention to this and I think there needs to be more money and investment into these aspects of honeybee nutrition. I'm looking at the other areas within my farm, the cattle farm, the grain farm. There is so much R&D put into those enterprises. And just a limitless amount of, of knowledge that has been generated and then applied down to our farmer level, which we use. And as farmers, we just take it all for granted. As beekeepers, we don't have access to that. And a lot of beekeepers don't have the connection to agriculture as I do, and I don't think they appreciate the lack of attention our industry is getting, right? So that's why I'm supporting this guy's efforts, and that's why I'm going through this antiviral trial. I don't know if he wants me to put this out there. Proof of concept. You know, not everything that he comes up with follows through. You know, there's there's a disconnect between study and actual achievement within our yards. And it's hard for us to quantify, right? And we're keeping focused on our objectives. And as we focus on these objectives and we apply this knowledge to trying to achieve our ultimate outcomes, you know, we can see performance by, you know, using products or managing your hives a little bit differently. And that's all what, he, that's what he's about. You know, we'll go through some kind of a, a thought process and we'll apply that thought process based on study or whatever, this idea out there. Sometimes it follows through like this uh, bioactivator, biocontrol, the rocket fuel. I see a response to that, so I keep using it. Other ideas we've been using, you know, within my apiary here and there, either fell flat or the colonies aren't doing as well because of other conditions, you know, compound um, all the circumstances we're trying to manage. So whether or not this follows through with benefit or doesn't, for me, it doesn't really matter right now. It's just trying to follow through with this proof of concept to see if we can achieve you know, the objective of our conversation. X, X, X. How many colonies? He wants me to use two groups of three colonies. So there's going to be a, the proof of concepts can be run in six colonies. So I'm going to post this. And if Andrew has any trouble, I'll delete it. But, uh, Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. It makes excellent YouTube content.